Hey friends, I'm so excited that you are back with me today as we continue reading The Tale of Despero by Kate D. Camillo. We met Negri Sal yesterday, or the last time that we read, and we learned that her past wasn't that great. If you remember, she was getting a good clout to the ear, which means her ears are now resembling something that looks like cauliflower, and they're not working very well. So she has a hard time hearing and understanding what people are saying. Right now, we are gonna go ahead and start off with chapter 26, and it's titled Royalty. When Mig turned seven years old, there was no cake, no celebration, no singing, no present, no acknowledgement of her birthday at all, other than Mig saying, uncle, today I'm seven years old. And uncle saying it in return, did I ask you how old you were today? Get out of my face before I give you a good clout to the ear. A few hours after receiving her birthday clout to the ear, Meg was out in the field with Uncle Sheep when she saw something glittering and glowing on the horizon. She thought for a moment that it was the sun, but she turned and saw that the sun was in the west, where it should be, sinking to join the earth. This thing that shone so brightly was something else. Meg stood in the field and shaded her eyes with her left hand and watched the brilliant light draw closer and closer and closer until it revealed itself to be King Philip and his Queen Rosemary and their daughter, the young Princess Pea. The royal family was surrounded by knights in shining armor and horses in shining armor, and atop each member of the royal family's head was a golden crown. And they were all, the king and the queen and the princess, dressed in robes decorated with jewels and sequins that glittered and glowed and captured the light of the setting sun and reflected it back. Oh, breathed Meg. The Princess P was riding on a white horse that picked up its legs very high and set them down very daintily. The P saw Meg standing and staring and she raised a hand to her. Hello, the Princess P called out merrily. Hello and she waved her hand again. Mig did not wave back. Instead, she stood and watched. Open-mouthed as perfect as the perfect, beautiful family passed but her by. Papa, called the princess to the king, what is wrong with the girl? She will not wave to me. Never mind, said the king. It's of no consequence, my dear. But I am a princess, and I waved to her. She should wave back. Meg, for her part, continued to stare. Looking at the royal family had awakened some deep and slumbering need in her. It was as if a small candle had been lit in her interior, sparked to life by the brilliance of the king and the queen and the princess. For the first time in her life, reader, Mig hoped. And hope is like love, a ridiculous, wonderful, powerful thing. Mig tried to name this strange emotion. She put a hand up to touch one of her aching ears, and she realized that the feeling she was experiencing, the hope blooming inside of her, felt exactly opposite of a good clout. She smiled and took her hand away from her ear. She waved to the princess. Today is my birthday, Meg called out. But the king and the queen and the princess were by now too far away to hear her. Today, shouted Meg, I am seven years old. We're gonna read chapter 27, A Wish. That night, in the small dark hut that she shared with uncle and the sheep, Mid tried to speak of what she had seen. Uncle, she said, eh, I saw human stars today. H how's that? I saw them all glittering and glowing and there was a little princess wearing her own crown and riding her own little white tippy toed horse. What are you going on about, said uncle. I saw a king and a queen and an itty bitty princess, shouted Mig. So, shouted Uncle back. I would like, said Mig shyly. I wish to be one of them princesses. 
laughed Uncle. Ha! Huh, an ugly dumb thing like you? You ain't even worth the enormous lot I paid you for. Don't I wish every night that I had back that good hen and that red tablecloth in place of you? He did not wait, wait for Meg to guess the answer to this question. I do, he said. I wish it every night. That tablecloth was the color of blood. The hen could lay eggs like nobody's business. I want to be a princess, said Meg. I want to wear a crown. A crown? Uncle laughed. She wants to wear a crown. He laughed harder. He took the empty kettle and put it atop his head. Look at me, he said. I'm a king. See my crown? I'm a king just like I always wanted to be. I'm a king because I want to be one. He danced around the hut with the kettle on his head. He laughed until he cried. And then he stopped dancing and took the kettle from his head and looked at Meg and said, You want to go clap to the ear for such nonsense? No, oh, thank you, Uncle, said Meg. But she got one anyway. Look here, said Uncle after the clout had been delivered. We will hear no more talk of princesses. Besides, whoever asked you what you wanted in this world, girl? The answer to that question, reader, as you well know, was absolutely no one. We're gonna go ahead and stop here for today. Um, I am very curious to see what you are feeling for Meg right now. So go ahead and share that with me if you can. I'd love to see if we can talk about our story together. I'll see you next time. Bye.